Hello. How are you? Grab them if you got them. I've tried to do this video twice and my words just get blue because my MS is kind of kicking in. So I'm done. This is going to be the video. I hope your, your 2022 was amazing for you. I know a lot of people this year who have struggled, me being one of them, who have struggled through this year. It was, it's not as bad as 2020, and I'm not going to say it is. I got very sick with COVID in 2020, and the whole world, you know, turned upside down. I'm not going to say 2022 was as bad as that, but this year for me anyways, it was a roller coaster. I had huge ups and huge downs. You know, if it was, in, you know, <laughs> the thing when you're very, very happy and when you're very, very sad, well, pfft, you know, I was just rolling with the waves. One of the most beautiful things that happened this year for us is we have two new family members. As you know, if you've been watching my videos, we have two new felines. They are Alice and Rosie, Rosalie, and they've been here, I want to say two months now. Seems like they've been here forever. They just fit right in. Perfect. But I think it's been two months and they've been a joy. Just like our two canine babies have been a joy. These two babies have been a joy. They just complete this house. They really do. And I know I've said this before, but it's true. It is way more chaotic. It is way more work. But you know what? I wouldn't trade it for the world because it's way more fun. It's just fun. You watch all four of them running back and forth and chasing each other. And it's just beautiful. It's beautiful. But anyways, and the downs of this year for me is I got COVID twice. And I've talked about that before too. And I'm, it, and you know, I am not, this is just me saying me. I am not telling anybody what to do. I've had my vaccinations. I've had my boosters, still got COVID twice, and I still have after effects of it. My sense of smell is off the charts. I swear I always smell something burning or I smell something, and my husband's like, babe, there's nothing going on. I don't know what's going on, dude. There's nothing going on. That's kind of an after effect. Um, my breathing, <laughs> my breathing is a little rough. You know, I'm ha it feels like my lungs are tight, but it's just the after effects. I had, um, I had the SVT, which is supraventricular tachycardia. It's a heart condition that now I had an ablation to stop that in 2009 because of the COVID it started back up. Now, knock on wood, I only had three episodes. One ended up in the emergency ward. The other two I made stop on my own, but thankfully and hopefully it's back under control again because it's been what two months maybe a month and a half something like that it hasn't started back up so knock on wood I'm sorry about the lighting I had the shade up and you know father son's knocking me in the head I've got the light on and it's still just I'm you know you know um what else I nicked a vein in my leg on my ankle you know where those little veins are shaving <laughs> my hands because I have MS you know I really should use electric razors because I really don't have to shave that much but I went to shave my leg and my hand slipped nicked the vein in my leg TMI for one moment it looked like a bloodbath in the shower Thank God Megan was here because Steve was next door getting winterizing everything, getting the riding lawnmower and everything taken care of, bringing the plows up in, making sure his mom was okay. You know, we were due for a storm, so that was rough. And Megan and I are sitting here like, I am not going to the hospital. I'm not doing it. And we made it stop. We got it to stop. My daughter's a trooper. She cleaned everything up. And we got it to stop, bandaged it, knock on wood, that was four days ago, five days ago. I don't even remember. Time just with me. And it's been fine ever since. So 
but yeah it's you know this year I I screwed up and my diabetes has gotten worse I'm on two medications now for my diabetes and I can't blame anybody but myself I can't blame anybody but myself. I'm on Forsega and I am on 2,000 milligrams a day of um, metformin. Thank God not a shot yet because I'm already taking Kasimta for that. <laughs> Kasimta I'm taking for my MS. That's a once a month shot. So far I think it's working really well. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, it's it's been an up and down thing. Like I said, there's been some great moments. There really has. My husband and I are doing more date nights than we normally do. I think it's beautiful. Um, all of our all of our feline and canine kids are healthy. All the people in this house are healthy, you know, except for, you know. But this year, we've only got a couple of weeks left into this year. Or a week, yeah, two weeks. I think it's two weeks. It just can't end enough for me. It can't. Not like I said, not like it was 2020. It, it's not that horrible, but excuse me, but this year has been crazy. It's been crazy. You know, um, there's just been so much. I get the hiccups. Good grief. But it's okay. It's going to be okay because for every bad thing that happens, there's a good thing that happens too. So, you know. But yeah, I hope you guys are having a great year. I hope if you're not, that good things happen to you next year. That you have an amazing next year. I mean, I am going to say this from this year. I did a lot of classes. I, um got a lot of certificates. I went through Udemy. I did a lot of herbal classes. I did um, naturopathy classes. Um, sh sh oh, you're going to have to forgive me. Shaman classes, voodoo classes. I have done a lot of classes and gotten a lot of certificates. Um, colored pencil classes. I've done a lot of classes because I wanted to at least feel like I, I didn't do them to say, oh, look at all the certificates I have, because certificates don't mean anything. They're, they're beautiful. They're, I love them. I'm proud of them. But honestly, they're sitting in a folder and there's nowhere I can go with them except for my pride. Do you know, am I making sense? Except for my pride of the accomplishments that I did make through all of the stuff that was going on this year. I have that to show for it but otherwise no I there's no oh look at the all these certificates I have no it's just to say at least I accomplished this so I'm proud of that but I did do quite a few of them and, and you know I kept going because I don't work because of all my health issues so I mean I'm not just gonna sit here you know, other than cooking, cleaning, taking care of my babies, you know, my, my little babies. I mean, I want to feel like I've accomplished something. You know, God has blessed any of you people that have jobs. I miss mine. I really, this year, I mean, it's been like 10 years or so since I haven't been able to work because of my MS. But this year, it really got to me. I really wanted, I missed my job. For 25 years, I was a nurse's aide and I loved it. I loved the interaction with my coworkers, the interaction with the elderly people that we were, that all of us were taking care of. I miss it so much. Yes, it was hard. Yes, it was nonstop. Yes, it was chaotic, and there were days he would come home and just want to drop on the bed. But it gave me such a sense of worth. It gave me such a sense of worth. I know that I was taking care of my people, my, my elderlies, 
and that they were getting fed and washed and dressed and their beds were clean and, and all of that because all of us, us aides made sure. And I mean, I, it's a joint effort. It's not just one person, but I miss, I miss that socialism too. The social socialization, I miss that. I really do. So that was, you know, it's been a little rough for me with that, with, with missing my job. Um, so that that's why I did the classes to try to keep me going and say, okay, I, I got a certificate for this. I've accomplished this. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I, I'm hoping next year will be more, uh, more adventurous. Let's put it that way. I hope next year will be more adventurous. This year, I've been in the house like a hermit most of the year because of my Ill because of the COVIDs, because of my illnesses, depression. You know how that goes. Any of you who are there. So if you are working a job and you have days where you just want to say, I'm done. And you think, oh, it would be so wonderful to stay home and do nothing. Be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you wish for because it is not all it's cracked up to be. It isn't. I don't care what job you're doing right now, what career you have. I don't care if you're a garbage man. You're making a purpose. You are making a purpose in this world and people need you and appreciate you. If you decided to quit your jobs and just stay home, it's rough. It's rough. And I know when you have days, I, I did it too when I was a nurse's aide. I'm like, I wish I could just, you know, when days were really rough and you didn't think you'd ever get anything done before three o'clock. And, you know, I was like, oh my God, what it would be like to just stay home and not have to do this. Mm, no, mm, no, I take that back. Believe me, I do. And the unfortunate thing is, is I know I'm too sick to work. I can't. I have days where I can do more physically than other days, but I still can't do a full-time job or even a part-time job because there are days when getting out of bed is like all the effort. Today, I vacked because I have a um, cordless vacuum. I vacked the living room and I changed pee, -pee pads and I put sausage, peppers, and onions in a crock pot, and they're sitting there. That is all I was able to do. My daughter's got today off, so I'm really lucky. She did the laundry. You know, she took out the trash. She did that stuff because I just don't have it in me today. I went to bed at 6 o'clock last night, and I got up at 7 this morning. I got up a couple of times to, you know, do what people do, use the bathroom. I have a CPAP. I had to make sure the water was filled. And that's what I did. And, but I miss it. I really do. You don't realize how much your career means to you till it's gone. And that's kind of, I, I've been doing a lot of reflecting this year. And I think I've been doing a lot of reflecting this year because my father-in-law passed away last year. And um, my mother-in-law is not doing well. My mom my, herself is in a nursing home not doing well. You know, she, we have a 93-year-old aunt that's, you know, she, she broke her hip a couple of years ago. She's in a huge house. And we're forever worrying about her and she's not walking well. You know, it's just a lot of reflecting. When when you when you see people passing away or, or their their health is, is going lower, it makes you reflect on you. It's like all the changes that go on. But anyways, I know this video is all over the map. I don't even know why I'm making it. I don't know if I'm going to put it up. I just, I just needed to get this out of my system. Now for another thing. If you live in Connecticut and you want to go to the, the Christmas lights at Rentschler Field, make sure 
You think about that very hard before you do that. Steve and I went Saturday night, and I know it's a week before Christmas. I get it. I get there's going to be a wait. We weren't worried about that. We were going to take the canine kits because we usually do when we go see the Christmas lights, but it was like, for some reason, something told us, no, 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 we'll leave them home because it's the first time we've been to the Rentschler Field Christmas lights. Said, no, just in case, you know, because they are barkers, we'll leave them home. Good thing we did. Now, it, it, there were three sets of cars going into the ticket booths when you, when you paid at the ticket booths. We had already prepaid online, but we knew there was going to be a wait. We expected that. It is Saturday night. It is the week before Christmas. Everyone wants to go see the light. That's not a big deal. It was like 45, 50 minute wait getting to the ticket booth. Steve and I were singing so stupid. We were making up stupid words to the Christmas songs on the radio. I mean, we were talking about Rentschler Field. We're, you know, look at this car. You know, it was just, we were being stupid. But we were having a ball. 50 minutes getting to the ticket booth, no big deal, because we knew, we expected that. What we didn't expect, and nobody warned us about, so I'm going to warn you now. After you pay your ticket, you have another 45, 50, maybe even an hour's wait to get to the actual lights. Let me repeat that because I know you heard me, but let me say it again. After you pay your ticket or show you that you paid, whatever it is, at the ticket booth, you are still in three lanes of, of cars waiting to get to the lights. Now, most cases when you're going to Christmas lights, you pay and maybe a quarter of a mile up, the lights are there, right? I'm like, what the hell is going on? And there were two people after this hour, almost hour wait to get to the actual lights after we already paid, there were two people directing the traffic to go into one lane. It was three lanes of cars going into one lane. That took forever. And it's like, you're kidding me. We're still waiting? Finally get to the lights. Now the first two thirds of the lights, half of them weren't working. Half of them, you had to guess what they were. Steve and I are looking at this light setup and it's like, is that a seal or is that the Grinch? You, I'm not even playing, you couldn't tell. So most A lot of the lights weren't working. I'd say about maybe a quarter to almost a half the lights weren't working. It was a very unimpressive show. It wasn't until you got to the last quarter that they did the 12 Days of Christmas. They did um, the nativity scene. They did something that I was really impressed by. I will give this. They they did Hanukkah, which you know they use, which most Christmas places do anyways, but they also did Kwanzaa. wasn't a very big setup for Kwanzaa, but they also did it. They did the lights for Kwanzaa. They did a couple of of um, scenes for Kwanzaa. It wasn't a big display. It should have been bigger in my opinion, but at least it was there. You know, Kwanzaa should be recognized just as much as Hanukkah and Christmas. And they did do a Kwanzaa setup. Like I said, not very big. It could, should have been bigger, but you take what you get. And it was beautiful. It was really pretty. The last, like I said, the last third of the lights were nice. They were nice. You know, you had this little canopy going down of blue and I think purple and white. It was either blue and white or purple and white, but they were blinking and you go under it like a tunnel. It was pretty. But the two thirds of it was really disappointing after waiting two, two and a half hours to get to it. So if you're going to Rentschler Field, I would definitely take like a little drive by before you go, see what it's looking like. Because we, and, and know that once you pay your ticket, I don't know if this is something they just do on the weekends. I don't know what's going on. Once you pay your ticket, you're not going, you're not going to immediately go to the lights. You've got a quite a stretch before you get there.
So that is just my warning to the Connecticut people or Massachusetts or whoever you are that's going to go see these lights at Rentschler Field. Now, if I'm not mistaken, those the m proceeds to the lights are going to a cause. I don't remember what the cause is. Please forgive me, but I believe that it's going to a cause. So that's worth it for that, but not for the time you're sitting there waiting. Oh, it was horrible. And I'm really glad we didn't take the kids or we would have had wet back seats because they would have been peeing all over the place. You know, they can do, do two hours, three, you know, that's stretched it. So anyways, that's all I wanted to tell you. If I do not, if you do not hear from me, if I don't do a video before Christmas, blessed Yule, which is Wednesday, blessed Yule to all of you, to all of us who celebrate it. A very Merry Christmas, a very Happy Holidays to all of you. I hope they're beautiful. We're going to, now I told you, I think I told you about Thanksgiving. We sent care packages to mom-in-law and to his aunt. This, we're doing it a little different for Christmas because I said that I wasn't going to do the holidays. Well, I got my Kasimta in me for my MS and I'm feeling a little better. I mean, I've still got tightness in my chest from the breathing and, and the nose thing and everything from the COVID, but she just lives next door. It, Steve is going to get, if all this works out the way we planned it is, <clears throat> excuse me, Steve's going to pick up his Aunt Nora, 93-year-old, bring her over mom's house, and we're doing a celebration with those with the two women, which is what we want to do. It's just too much it's not that I don't love his family, I do, but it's too much to do everybody. I don't have the strength for that. It's a lot of work. We bought a turkey. We, we've got the fixings for it. We're going to bring, we're going to bring it next door and we're going to have Christmas with them. No gifts, no gifts are needed. Steve and I are like that. I know I said I was going to get off this, but you know, hey, give me a moment here. I don't get to see you. I don't get to talk to you very often. Steve and I are not anti-holiday by any means, but we don't exchange gifts with each other. Valentine's Day, we don't even celebrate it. And it's not because we're anti-romantic. That is way beyond not true. My husband's one of the rom most romantic men I've ever had in my life. It's because we can't, and, and this is something we both believe in, cannot justify taking one day to show your love for each other. And it's mainly the man that has to come up with these huge, and we just, we buy things, it, as long as we can afford them, if we can afford them, we get things for each other all the time. So it's not like, you know, you have to have this special day for it. And I am not trying to piss in anybody's cornflakes. I swear to God, I'm not. If you are a huge Valentine person, you have the most beautiful Valentine ever. I swear. But we're just not those people. We're very, we're so simple, we're almost boring. I we probably are boring. But we just don't celebrate Valentine's Day because we're always going out with each other. We're always having date nights where, you know, you youngins, you youngins sit there with the Netflix and chill. We really do Netflix and chill. We watch, we find a movie, we get, we make an hors d'oeuvre dinner where we just, you know, get all these microwave stuff and put it together and we sit there and watch a movie together. That's our date nights and we do it all the time. So it's not like, you know, when Valentine's rolls around, it's like, okay, what do I get him? He's like, what do I get? And it's just too much pressure. I've been having my MS, has, if, if you wonder, if you can see that my left eye is a little swollen, it's an MS episode, so nothing big. But yeah, so we don't, we don't, ex we don't exchange gifts at Christmas and things like that because, you know, birthdays are usually we go out to dinner together, you know, watch a movie together. We don't really do that because it's just one of those things where it's like, all right, you know, we've been married, we've been together 23 years come January, been married over 20, 
What do you get someone after all those years? It's like, you know, you just don't want to get them something just to say, well, I got you a gift. That's not us. And like I said, if you celebrate Valentine's Day, I am so not trying to take that away from you. You enjoy it. Oh, Lord, the MS in my eye is kicking in. Forgive me, people. You enjoy every moment of it. But that's just not Steve and I. We're just not those people because... You know, it's just one of those things that years, years ago, I, I think it was me that actually started it. I was like, babe, I am so sick of, you know, Christmas and Valentine's Day trying to figure out what to get you. I've had enough of this. Can we just not do this? And just, you know, we, we always get, and back then we had more money. Now, you know, but it's like, you know, we always get what we want for each other anyways, why don't we just skip this? And he was so happy. He's like, thank God, because I was thinking the same thing. But yeah, yeah I over explained that way too much, didn't I? It's one of those days, people. My MS is kicking in, you know. I hope you have an amazing Christmas. An amazing Yule if I don't do another video by then. Um, I, oh, just make it magical. If you've got a huge family... Oh, enjoy every moment, every moment. I used to, you know, back when I was in Springfield, we had a lot of family and friends during the holidays. We had like 25, 30 people be coming in and out of our house all day long during the holidays or every day, actually. People come in and visit, grab a coffee. I had that coffee pot going all day long. Here in Connecticut, I think that's another reflection that I'm doing. It's a, it's a, it's a change. It really is. It, it's, you know, a lot of my people that I used to hang with are in Massachusetts and, you know, they don't always have time. It's like a 45 minute to an hour drive here and, you know, so it's going to be very small for Christmas, but it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. We're going to have the two most important people there, our, our elders. Steve and I are going to be together. It's going to be nice. And even if his younger brother, like his younger brother, is single, even if he shows up, I always make plenty of food, so it don't matter. All right, people. I love you very much. Thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for being people I care about so much because a lot of you that are on my channel are people that are friends with me on Facebook, and I truly do love you. I hope you have an amazing holiday, no matter what you celebrate. I'm sure I'm going to talk to you before New Year, so. But try and take care, and take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. I don't care what you do for yourself. Do something good for you, too. You deserve it. Bye-bye.